Hey guys, I am super excited about this video because my twin brother Mark is on his way over to talk about awesome stuff in general aviation and what we can do to make it better. Also, if you wait till the end, we're gonna talk a little bit about the aircraft I'm doing, Draco X, a helicopter, possibly a small jet, and something lands on water, something that goes fast, something that goes slow, a military project and an STC project. I have a lot to build, there's a lot going on. Stick around to the end, we'll show you all that. In the meantime, welcome Mark. You guys know the drill, Dr. Work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, I'm here today with Mark. The two of us want to talk to you about something really important. Um, before we dive into that, I'll kind of high level this. One, we want to talk about some of the past planes we've built. And then also, we're going to move into what we've been talking about for like the last five or six months. Yeah, life changing stuff. Both Mark and I have had near death experiences, and some of you have already seen. Mine, and though I walked away unscathed, blowing an engine at altitude and gliding 40 miles in IMC doesn't always end up good, and it started to cause a lot of self-reflection on past and what is my future, both family and in aviation, and many of you don't know. Yeah, I, I got to kiss death myself, and uh, not aviation related, but we're going to talk about it, but it de mm. definitely made a big shift for me and my life and my focus and what I want to do going forward. So that's what we're here to talk about. So in the past, our life's been centered around three primary things, building our families, building fun airplanes, and building our businesses. Yep. Now, we have both had these very recent experiences, and we'll dive into Mark's more a little bit later, but um, when you get a call that says, um, Something's happened with your brother. He's likely not going to make it. How fast can you get to Texas and help prepare to get his family life matters in order? It makes you reflect. And I was already doing a lot of reflection because we just lost our business partner, Creighton, in a plane crash. And the week before that had happened, I had had an engine explode at altitude. So we've had a lot of this dialogue. So before we dive into that and what we want to do in aviation going forward, I want to talk a little bit about some of the fun stuff, our past builds, what's happened that's caused us to reflect, and where we're going in aviation, and uh, what we can do to continue to make it fun and great. So I think we start with some of our, the airplanes we've built. Now, we didn't used to do YouTube videos very right. much. I still don't do nearly as much as Mike does. I didn't I know YouTube it. videos when we first started building planes. Yeah. But so watch YouTube. That's... How long so so a lot of the planes we've built, people don't know about, and we've had 14 airplanes we've built in a little over 20 years, and it's ridiculous to think about that. And that's airplanes we've built. We've had yeah, a lot of other like, planes we didn't actually build, we just redid them. Yeah, so we count 14 as like more of a ground up complete build, yeah. and then I don't know how many, a dozen others. Like I, in that 14, I'm not even gonna count the Red Bull build, which was a highly modified aircraft, but it was already built, so we yeah. just or, or my cub. We changed a lot of stuff on the airplane, of course the engine and the panel, and then Perry the Platus, uh, arguably the most modified legacy Platus on the planet, and yeah. that doesn't count. That's that doesn't 14. count as the 14, so, so let's, let's try, talk try to, about the 14 airplanes. Let's just see if we can list them. Okay. Uh, start with the RV-6A. Yep. And then I uh, did a Zenith 801. Zenith which, by the way, <laughs> Was awesome. Of course, he turboed it. I think you were the first person to turbo. I think it's charge. the only 801 that ever got ever turboed, turboed with a Lycoming engine. Yeah. RV10, which is which a hoot of a plane. RV, awesome. you guys build great planes. They're so much fun. And good, good builds. Um, Lance Airs, holy crap! Now, too many of them. We, we love many. them, but a, a lot, lot of people think we just kept modifying a Lance Air. We mm -hmm. built a half a dozen Lance Airs so we, ground up. I mean, so we started aircraft. with a, a Continental 550. Uh, normally aspirated legacy yep. and then we're like we like a Lycoming so we did a 540 Lycoming engine 540 and then we twin turboed that yep and then you took the 550 
Continental one, and was it supercharger on that one or turbos on that one, the next step up? No, that one, well then about another Legacy built right. a whole new airplane, airframe right. we right. did. Uh, a supercharger, a 780, then yeah. a supercharged 780. Yeah. And then an, another completely separate airframe, Mark wanted a eight cylinder to race around, so he built an eight cylinder like homing yeah. Lance Air, so there's all actually planes two eight cylinders. All those, these planes are still out there flying. Yeah, they're, except for turbulence, tier, I'm still looking for an engine. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's airworthy. Airworthy. It has power. Then, then turbulence was another build. Uh, of course, then we know some of the others. Uh, Scrappy, Draco. We probably missed a couple, but there's 14 from bottom to top. Uh, mostly Lance Air, Lance Air 4P. We yep, left out the Lance Air 4P. So we did a lot of Lance Airs. <laughs> yeah, they're fast. We like fast. So, uh, well, we like the extremes, right? It's yeah. like, how fast can it go, and then how slow can it go? You never get yes. to have everything, so you just try to get the bookends. Like, that's, yeah. that's where we go for. So we've had our share of uh, um, circumstances in aviation. We all understand the risks in that. And uh, we charge forward because we love aviation. We love flight, and we want to continue doing it and giving back. Um, let's talk a little bit about what happened, and... Uh, with my brother Mark, right in the middle of uh, me kind of in a, a bit of a difficult time losing our partner, worrying about what if I hadn't got the legacy on the ground, and then shortly after getting a call from Mark. So I want you to tell him what happened, what caused this self-reflection on aviation as a whole and our whole lives and what we're doing well, going with, forward. With our aviation background, uh, many of you would think that this is going to be an aviation story. It really isn't, but it kind of has an aviation uh, reflection in it, of course. But I had a simple gallbladder stone issue, no big deal. Had a gallbladder attack, they removed my gallbladder, pretty run-of-the-mill procedure, no big deal. It was at our home in Texas. Ten days later, I had forgotten I even had the surgery. Everything went perfect, there was no pain even after day one, and I was talking to a neighbor uh, in the front yard, and he was, we were literally laughing, he's telling me a story, and before I even recognized what my body, was going through my body, I stopped in midstream, I put my hand right in front of his face, and I said, stop talking, I'm dying, and I turned around and walked away, and as I'm walking away, I'm going, what did I just say, and my whole body was overcome with a sense of dread. I walked into the house, I told Susie, I said, get me to the hospital, I'm dying. She didn't know what was wrong. And we got on our way to the hospital by the, immediately. And um, by the time we got to the hospital, my, my poor wife's pounding on my chest, screaming, come back to me as we get up to the emergency room. My body's already let go of its bowels. And Mike and I have been search and rescue for a long time. Susie knows that when the body lets go of everything, that's a pretty bad scenario. And I then woke up in an ER with a whole team of people around trying to keep my heart going and keep my blood pressure up so I could keep living on this planet. And um, I had E. coli sepsis. My whole body was poisoned, uh, kidney, liver, everything. And I had no idea. I never even had a symptom. The doctor said it's uh, one in five, don't survive that. And um, had we not been that close to the hospital, I certainly would not have survived it. Uh, I was five days in ICU, but in the meantime. Yeah, so I get a call. Mark's, um, I, I find out that he was basically almost unreadable um, on all his vitals, and that uh, he had passed that point where essentially he had died and been revived and that he wasn't conscious, and that because of how severe the poisoning through all his organs were, that the likelihood is he wouldn't make it home. So, uh, um, jumped so, on an airplane. Yeah, jumped in. Grabbed jumped, one of these. <laughs> jumped in a plane, it's faster than commercial. Uh, grabbed Jason, a friend of mine, uh, Jason Sneed. He jumped in with me, we flew straight to Texas. Fortunately, we got into the room, Mark's unconscious, but um, we walked in the room and just started talking to Mark and his charts, his vitals. Blood pressure. Blood, blood pressure. pressure was the big one that was yeah. 
that was the big concern. It's keeping blood in my brain. Yeah, and uh, I walked in the room and started talking to him, and uh, immediately his blood pressure just started climbing fast. Um, and uh, they said, this is unbelievable. We can't believe how fast the blood pressure is moving up. And uh, he came to, and, and uh, that was kind of a, a wake-up call. Yeah. You know, Mark was talking, Mark and I were, ever since the, the airplane incident and losing uh, our friend, um, we had been doing these daily drives. Fortunately, Mark and I live five doors down from each other, um, very intentional. And every day we're in town, we go for a drive. And uh, we had been doing this drive for months, just talking about life. What's important? How critical it is, what's important? How, what would happen if I didn't land that aircraft and look what just happened to our friend who passed away? And, and, and what can happen just, just, what can happen to you just talking to a neighbor in the front yard, just like that, it can, it can all end. And so, yeah. since we'd already been having these conversations about what matters, and then I have this experience and get to come back, suddenly I'm realizing that in a very literal sense, I'm on my bonus life. And I've had a beautiful life, we both have. We've been doing the morning drives since we started our first company at 15 years old. It was bike rides and Mike <laughs> Forrester, a friend of ours, was, drove us to our job sites to work on our construction <laughs> projects. And so we've had these life talks our whole life, but for the first time ever, we've realized you spend your whole life trying to um, have a good living and have a good life and raise good kids. And now we're looking at it going, we have a good living. We have great, great kids. kids. We have really built good. for ourselves a wonderful life. And I don't want to focus anymore on how to make a good living. I have an amazing living. I'd like to try to make a difference, if that's possible. And since yeah. we're passionate about aviation, the hope is that we can find the right kinds of opportunities or way to make a difference in aviation. Leave something behind besides just having fun or something for our kids, but something for an industry that we've, we've loved for so long. It's the industry, aviation has given a lot to us. It's the, one of our, well, hands down, aside from family, spouse and family, it's the, been the funnest, most rewarding section of our lives is our aviation. And so for me, as Mark and I talk, my path is, uh, is pretty laid out. And um, I kind of had a big pause and step back and now I'm really excited to jump in. I love flight. <laughs> I gotta fly forever, so I wanna talk, I'll talk a little bit about some of the planes we're gonna build, but um, I'm gonna keep building airplanes. Um, I still got several businesses I've gotta run, so they gotta be nights and weekends, and someday in the future, um, when I retire the business side, I'll just build airplanes. But uh, Mark, yeah. you're, I'm a little more of the airplane build, and, and, I, and I just think, kind of semi-retired from your company. I did. Um, about eight months ago, I stepped down as CEO of Best Aviation Products and Best Tugs. Ranch Pratt has been doing a fantastic job and running your that kids. company with <laughs> my four sons and some daughter-in-laws and, and, uh, and a whole bunch of other great employees. And the company's strong and it's solid and it's doing good things. I've been taking time off to try to decide what's next step for me. We've tried this before. I tried retirement at 30 years old. That lasted like eight months. I tried at 40. I sold seven companies and said, I'm done. Yeah, I and 90 days later, I'm like, okay, I'm only gonna start three more, which I failed at that because we have way more than that right now. But <laughs> and I, I tried retirement at 40 years old too, and that didn't work. And I, and I guess in the last eight months I've been playing. If you follow us on social media, you know I've been traveling a lot and just having a good time. But um, I think I failed again. I, I don't hold still well. I need something to do. And I, I have one airplane I want to build. Mike's got several that's in the project. I've got one I want to build, and that's that six-cylinder Lycoming Thunderbolt-powered carbon cub. It's called Ambush. It's been in storage. I pulled it out of storage, and we're going to get back to work and get building that. So I want to finish that project, but I, I would like to do something more meaningful. So 
With that in mind, or did you want to talk about the airplanes you got coming up? No, I'll tell you some of the airplanes uh, I'm going to be building. We'll leave, save that for last. For those of you who want to know, what is Mike building right now and what is he building next? What does the future hold? I'll dive into all of that in just a minute. But what we want to talk about while we still have your attention, if we haven't lost you already, um, we want to talk about um, how we can get your input and what Mark and I can do. Um, to further what's given back to us in aviation on a very broad scale. I want, we want details, we want grand ideas, small ideas. We want you to give us your thoughts. If Mark had an opportunity to dive into general aviation as a primary focus of just growing, building, promoting, fixing, fixing, general aviation, if there's things that are broken. If Mark had an opportunity to do that in a big way, what would you want Mark to do? I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build radical, crazy airplanes that are fun. Uh, that's what I love. Mark wants to give back to aviation too. Where do you think we should put Mark's attention if he and, had that opportunity? And, and we don't even know what that looks like or what it might look like, but you never know what opportunities might present themselves. and. And if we could find an opportunity, create an opportunity, what would it be? Mike and I took some ideas down ourselves. <laughs> Mike's ideas are in here. My ideas are in here. We're not going to share them because we don't want to steer your thoughts on your ideas. But the three questions are this, if you could please help us. First, I like to look at the positive. I'm an optimistic person by nature. What's going right in aviation? What is happening out there that you're seeing that's making a difference in a positive and meaningful way? The next thing is what's going wrong? What scares you? What needs focus? What needs time? What needs energy and passion behind it? And um, be as brief or long as you want in your comments. We want to try to read all of them. I want a real understanding of where everybody's heart and soul is with aviation. And then thirdly, and I think this is important as well, I'd be curious how many of you are members of different aviation associations and which ones in particular? Now, you can just list all of them if you're just literally in all of them. Um, I think most pilots probably don't know all of them, but that's okay. But in particular, list an aviation association that you've been involved in for at least five years. I don't mean you became a member once because you went to an air show and the membership was required to get in. I mean, whether you're going to the air shows or not, you've been in it for at least five years and making a financial contribution or going to the seminars or going to the workshops, participating in a meaningful way. So those are the three questions. What's going right? What scares you or what needs some fixing? And what associations are you supporting to make sure that these things are going in the right direction? No, I think that's great. And these things, ideas can be from, whether it's policy, flight training, laws and regulations, Good things with the FAA, maybe not so positive things with the FAA. Maybe it's flight medical, maybe it's uh, inspections, maybe it's new um, avionics systems. What are the things in aviation that let need in, attention? Let in the fuel, yeah, yeah, whatever it is. We want to hear all of your thoughts that could use a little attention and maybe between these two knuckleheads, we can help. And if you have a ton of ideas, please number them. <laughs> you got 15 one. ideas, like put them in order of priority if you would. Number one being the top priority and down at number 37 is gasoline's free, right? <laughs> Let's start with the things that we can make the best impact on the quickest. Well, we'll incentivize you guys. We haven't uh, picked out exactly what we want to do, but we're going to go through and pick some of the people that really spent some time, effort, maybe gave some really great ideas and send them some cool free stuff. Maybe uh, RC, Draco, shirts, hats, gear. Um, we'll just randomly pick people that put a little time into helping us find ways to benefit aviation. So thank you for your help on that. And with that being said, should we talk about the future aircraft we want to do and what we're building right now? Mine's Ambush, <laughs> and I'll probably need to do a video on that. But like I said, six-cylinder Lycoming Thunderbolt-powered carbon cut with a lot of modifications. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, I've got a few planes underway, several being built at once. We'll start, I've, I've briefly talked about some of them or hinted to them. Some I still can't tell you, but let me tell you what I am working on. I'm building two carbon cubs right now, one with my wife and one for me. We're gonna build two simultaneous. We are modifying a bit, they are super cool. 
Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and then I'll sell mine because I've got Scrappy right here, which I absolutely love. So, uh, but it's fun to build mine and Chandra's together, a couple of Lycoming powered. It's almost awesome. Almost easier. Tons. Like when we were it, doing Lancers two together. We had two Lancers side by side. It went just <laughs> as fast as one, it seemed like. It was like 10% more work to build two. Yeah. So those are underway. And a lot of you ask about Draco X. Draco X, yes, has absolutely officially begun. Draco X is underway. There is another aircraft that has, I have got almost two years into. Um, that one is part of a certified project that is not, I can't announce yet, but it's awesome. Top secret. I'm, top secret. But I am excited about that, and it does take a lot of my time. The paperwork on it is growing. It's just a massive amount of work, and at some point we'll get to announce that. So that is another build. So two Cubs, Draco X, uh, a STC project, a military project I'm just about done with that uh, I won't get to talk about that one. And then future projects, let's talk about those. So I have designed, now this one, at another video, I'll go into more detail, but I have designed a small jet, which is really awesome. That one will probably move later down my timeline, but I have a two-seat jet that I want to build so badly. It has a bent wing. It's really got a unique design. Um, I'll go into it another time, but it's, it's really, <laughs> really cool. So, and then I have another aircraft that is potentially in the works. I think I may be wrapping it up real soon um, and moving forward with the acquisition of a plane. I want to know what you guys think if I should go for it. But I think I want to do a Patey edition of a famous aircraft. There's only a few of them flying oh, I in know the what you're entire talking about. Like, Where are you going with world. this, Mike? In I know, the entire I know world, there's only a few of them flying. And I thought, what if I buy one of these and uh, just gut it and bring it back in a Patey kind of let's go wild version? Are you, you going to tease the whole time? You're no, I'm going to tell what it is. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should I buy an Albatross? make it the ultimate van life conversion, solar, <laughs> thrusters, all kinds of things to travel the world by land and sea. Um, I think that might be something really cool. This is like a, the overland vans, but yeah. aviation style. Aviation. If you did a van conversion, <laughs> Mike wants to do a plane conversion uh, and uh, do an albatross. So that is currently in the concept phase and maybe even close to an acquisition full build phase. And then if you rotate this way, this is another project that we haven't talked about. We bought a helicopter, B0105, and uh, I don't know when I'm gonna dive into that, but we went ahead and spent the money and picked up the bird, twin turbine. Uh, as you know, many of you don't know, um, some of you I'm sure do, that is what the Red Bull full aerobatic helicopter is based off with a lot of modifications. And Mark and I thought about, what if we could pull 500 or more pounds out of that, put a bunch of carbon fiber in it, maybe turn the back into a big giant bed and make it a van life helicopter conversion, kind of something you- Because why you got. not? Why not? Maybe you take the uh, Albatross to the Caribbean islands down South America. Maybe you take a BO-105 with a bed in the back and a TV and you take it up into Alaska and fly way back into some really cool places. So uh, I think a carbon fiber modified B0105 would be a pretty cool, cool build. So we've got uh, four you, underway, four gonna, more coming. <laughs> you're gonna need to retire to get all these. <laughs> I, I do need to retire. So that's kind of an outlook, uh, an STC project, a military project. Those are the builds that are going on. I hope you guys follow along. Um, we're really excited about aviation. Um, we want you guys all to be safe, make good choices, fly within your means, fly within your aircraft means, and we love you guys. Please pause, take the time, put in your comments. How can the two of us better and grow general aviation on every level? We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Make some comments for us. It really is important to us to know what everybody else is feeling about general aviation. Mike and I have made our list. We know what's important to us and what makes us nervous. We need to know what you think so we have some direction and hopefully we can find ways to make a difference, make an impact. Okay, 
You guys know the drill. I'm going to send you a bunch of cool stuff, so spend some time on it. Do some comments, and we'll, I'll reach out to you. Appreciate you guys. Ready? <laughs> Back, Back to work. work.